I'll talk still to the camera, but... <laughs> Leroy's going to distract me the whole time. Thanks. <laughs> Good. All right. OK, so guys, um, we're just on our pre-show here. Um, Nicole, AKA Dr. Cox, is joining um, us today. And we're going to be talking about uh, nutrition. So uh, pre and post workout nutrition as well as hydration. Um, so yeah, we're just going to be a few minutes here in our pre-show. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the comments. Uh, we'd love to answer any questions. Um, yeah. yeah, we're gonna stick to mostly uh, nutrition topics. Um, I know supplements are always gonna be a question, but that's like a whole other ball game mm -hmm. basically. So we're gonna keep it pretty minimal on the supplement front, but anything that you guys have uh, in terms of nutrition questions, we'll talk a little bit about keto diet, uh, we'll talk a little bit about low carb, intermittent yep. fasting, all those types of things. So yeah, just bring your questions on. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we'll just sit here and drink our coffee until... <laughs> <laughs> it's time to roll. Yeah. <laughs> Are we cranking the fireplace on? Is that a thing? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our Fit Life live stream. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Cox. Um, she is a naturopathic doctor and sports medicine doctor. So um, we are going to be talking to you guys about pre-workout, um, post-workout nutrition, as well as hydration and electrolyte replacement. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them as we're kind of doing our chat. Um, in the meantime, we're kind of just going to start off talking about, um, I guess we'll just start with the pre-workout nutrition. Um, Nicole has been doing keto diet for about... Probably like two, just over two months now, I would two say. Two months, yeah. yeah. So um, so she has her perspective um, from the ketogenic side and as well, I'm going to be talking more about more balanced nutrition. Um, that's kind of how, what I've always followed is more, I guess, balanced nutrition side. So, so yeah, um, where to start? Gosh, there's so many things. So like keto, you guys have heard about before. I'm sure it's like everywhere in the mm -hmm. media these days. Um, so what have I noticed? Like the past two months, um, I've also started with intermittent fasting. So I'm sure you guys have heard of that as well. It was a little bit easier um, to get into ketosis if you're already used to an intermittent fasting because you're uh, reducing your calories for the most part overall anyway and then I kind of moved into a bit of a lower carb diet and then moved into ketosis and yeah that's kind of where I'm sitting at now I definitely have um, some weekend cheats but <laughs> for the most part I like to keep it pretty keto yeah no that's awesome and so you're like what would you say on average how many days per week are you working out now um, yeah. and what does your diet kind of look like before a workout before a workout so I tried for a really long time to do my workouts fasted um, mostly because I don't have a lot of workouts during the week so because um, I work six days a week mm -hmm. so it's pretty hard for me to get to the gym all the time um, no excuses though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but for the most part uh, yeah I get, like to work out fasted and get the biggest bang for my buck so I'm on averaging probably like maybe two or three a week um, try not to eat before but sometimes if I'm working all day then I work out in the evening time and in which case um, lunch would probably be my only meal before I work out. Okay. Yeah. And what do you do to make sure that I guess you don't go into a catabolic state while you're working out if you're doing it fasted? Yeah, definitely. So um, with keto, it's a little bit tricky because you always have to monitor your protein intake as well because any excess protein that you have in the day um, does end up counting towards 
kind of like your carb intake. Um, anything extra will go into, um, be used as glucose basically in the body. So um, if I do fast most of the day and then I'm going for a workout, I'll make sure I'll have some uh, branch chain amino acids just to make sure I'm not completely like ruining my muscles basically. Cool. Yeah. What about you? What do you do? <laughs> yeah, me. So um, honestly, uh, when I work out, it kind of, it depends what I'm eating obviously around what time of day I work out. Um, I prefer working out in the morning, but it does depend on the day and the schedule and what's happening. Um, so when I do work out in the morning, I'm not the type of person I don't like working out fasted unless it was just cardio. That's the only, only thing that I will go to the gym completely fasted for, um, is if I were to do a low to moderate intensity cardio. Mm -hmm. um, if I am doing weight training myself, I feel like I need the energy from food source to get a really good workout in. Definitely. Otherwise, I just I don't have the energy to sustain a workout. So um, again, depending on the time of day, um, I'll usually have a decent sized meal. Let's say I'm going in the afternoon, I'll have like a decent sized meal about an hour, two hours before. Um, and then for me, um, what I've always kind of done um, over the years is I like having a simple carb mm -hmm. um, and a fat source or a protein source um, or both. So uh, one of my go-tos is just a quick energy. I'll have an apple with some peanut butter. Yeah. I, I love that. It For me, it works. And I guess one thing that we both kind of wanted to take away from or for you to take away from this is that you kind of need to try different things in order to figure out what works for you. What works for me might not work for Nicole and vice versa. So um, there's so many different opinions out there and there's so many things that work and so many things that don't work. Mm -hmm. So really it's, you have to do trial and error with yourself and see how you feel um, when you're working out. So definitely, um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I find that with like all of the people that, um, all my clients that I work with and stuff like that, it's just so individualized. Everything that they um, try and like, you know, the, the athletes that have been doing it for years, would I ever say like, hey, go keto now? Now, no, mm -hmm. because like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. They know they have a form, they have a formula that works, like don't mess with it basically. Exactly. And just support them for where they're at. Like people know their own bodies. Um, so when you come in and make all of these crazy changes, it's going to take them off their game. Mm -hmm. And especially for athletes, like anyone looking um, to get somewhere, like hit a certain point, then, I mean, you don't want to mess with it too much, right? Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, we were kind of chatting a bit about um, carbohydrates before, because obviously on keto, um, it's very low carbohydrates, where I've always kind of, uh, I say it's more balanced, where I do allow myself to have carbohydrates, whether that's oats or rice or quinoa, um, fruits, lots of vegetables, um, where that's a little more controlled when you're doing keto. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of rely on having that around my workout and my body's just gotten used to that as an energy source and I enjoy that. Um, but then again, there's people that function well with very limited carbohydrates yeah. and, and that just works for them, so. Definitely. And it's actually really interesting too, when I was just intermittent fasting and did like a fasted workout, I found I was better off and had more energy than I did on a keto workout, like if I had eaten throughout yeah. the day. So, I mean, everybody's so different. And then we yeah. do read all these research papers that say this, this and this, but I mean, it is just a group of people that they study. That doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. It doesn't mean it's gonna work for me. You know what yeah. I mean? So it just gets really tricky out there to navigate all of these research papers. There's like a billion people online saying this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we, like our hats go off to you guys. We know it's super difficult. Like mm -hmm. I've been studying nutrition for, I don't know, eight years at least. And yeah. I'm still like. It's ever changing. And that's, yeah. yeah. When I think about when I first started um, opinions were so different and there was so much research to support one type of thing and then now it's it's so different what you thought was okay is now not okay so mm -hmm. um, I still think fat is a big one too like um, a lot yeah. of athletes steer clear of fat which um, I don't think is a great idea because it's gonna keep you fuller for longer it's a great energy source um, is it the best you know right after a workout or right before a workout? Probably not because it is going to slow the absorption of those right. carbohydrates going to where they need to go. Um, but don't eliminate it from your diet. Like it's still very valuable for brain health and recovery and all that sort of stuff too. So I think that got, you know, I think, I think that's like, yeah, been 
put away now. I feel like for a long time it was low, low to no fat mm -hmm. diets was a thing, but I feel like it, people have become aware that that's, that's not a good thing at all. Yeah. Um, and if you're having low or no fat in certain products, usually that means it's sugar or something else, yeah. right? It's like you're yeah. getting low fat or no fat, but then it's your sugar or carbohydrates. Yeah. That's exactly. So, yeah. um, yeah. Do we have any questions yet coming up about, uh, just curious. Okay. Nothing there yet. Yeah. We'll just keep trying. <laughs> yeah, we'll no. keep. Nothing, but I, I got a basic question for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when it comes to just like just overall, like in, in a general aspect, when we're talking about electrolytes. Uh, mm -hmm. chat on that yeah. Yeah, just chat on that for sure so um, electrolytes are an interesting it's just charged particles basically in your body and the whole goal is like to have a perfect perfect's not a great word but a balance of them um, to keep your body hydrated and keep all of your cells uh, functioning so um, it's so funny I hear so many people so many athletes and stuff they're like yeah I know I don't drink water on the bench like in a hockey game or I don't drink water after a workout or and it's not even just water like they're not replenishing all of those things that they just sweat it out. Yeah, exactly. And like one, I think it's like every pound of um, water you lose while you're working out, it decreases your performance by like 15% or oh, something wow. like that. Yeah, so those little stats, when I read them, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. You're missing out on like a huge aspect of your performance. Yeah. So um, I don't know, what do you tell your clients? Well, honestly, I'm not not even focusing on elect electrolytes more so just water like hydration is so important um when you work out like you're you're sweating out water you're sweating out electrolytes you're sweating everything out so um you need to replenish that um so what i recommend is um i guess eight cups of water a day is kind of like it that's been around we were saying like for years now that's just like a standard but um i do think it's kind of dependent on your weight how much water you should be drinking so um, a rule of thumb I go by is 0.5 times your body weight in, uh, not liters, in milliliters. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's a good way to kind of um, just determine based on your body weight how much water you should be intaking in a day. And just continually, you know, we were saying drink a, carry a water bottle around with you and, um, you know, maybe you're monitoring every half hour you're drinking a certain amount or just like have one of those big hilarious bodybuilder <laughs> water bottles and carry the around big if that's what you need you just need to figure out a way that works for you that can like force you to drink to drink water so yeah. timers on your phone i've heard of those oh, work pretty yeah. well too to to get people um thinking about it Another thing, like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes here, but uh, Gatorade and Powerades and all that sort of stuff are full of sugar and they're full of dyes and they're full of junk and, like, not to be too naturopathic, but, like, <laughs> any way you can get those out of your system um, is probably beneficial. Unless you're, like, a super pro athlete that needs those sugars right after a workout, like, you probably don't need a Powerade if you just did, you know, um, 30 minutes on the treadmill or something exactly. like that. Exactly, and, like, yeah, and endurance athletes like if you're running a marathon then that would be the type of person that would probably need that but yeah. otherwise yeah I would I agree just yeah. kind of steer clear of that um, we haven't really talked about post-workout nutrition mm -hmm. so um, one thing uh, that I've told every client that I've ever worked with and a rule that I've followed my entire I guess uh, gym lifetime has been um, to be having protein after your workout so um, again, different opinions on this, but there is a window um, where you should be having your protein um, after your workout anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. So protein powder is the thing that can get into your muscles, help repair your muscles the qu most quickly. Um, food takes time to digest. So if you were to finish your workout and go and have, you know, a chicken breast and a full meal, it's going to take a lot longer to digest and get into your muscles where um, a protein powder will be very quickly to just get into your bloodstream and then help repair and rebuild your muscles. Yeah. And there's some good research too, that combining um, a good carbohydrate source with a protein is more bioavailable in your body. So that means your body can use it more. Um, good shakes, like 
a good protein shake. If you want to come home and make a good smoothie, like I find dates an awesome source of carbohydrates mm -hmm. and they're like a natural food source too, bananas, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, so even if you want to combine kind of your protein, which is synthetic, but at least with a good carbohydrate source and stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have um, a go-to, like maybe not protein powder, but do you use whey or casein? Or? Yeah. So, um, I, I use whey currently. Um, I've, I've tried, I have tried every different source of protein, to be honest. Um, I kind of wanted to experiment to see what worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've tried whey, I've tried isolate, casein, um, a few different uh, vegetable proteins. Um, for the most part, I, I can handle most of them. There are some ways that have upset my stomach and, you know, some people just react differently. So, you know, a lot of times people are unsure what type of protein that they should be having. And I really mm -hmm. do think, again, it's like per personal preference um, based on the taste. Um, certain proteins people just literally can't handle, like yeah. the Vega, certain ones, right? The texture yeah. is... Texture is so, huge. Oh, I it feel. is huge. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, yeah, they just, it's like too chalky or this and that. Yeah. But then it's also how how your body feels so um you know if you find you're gassy or bloaty after um having a certain type of protein then maybe that isn't a good protein for you um so you know i recommend trying different brands and just seeing how you feel um the best but mm -hmm. whey protein is the most uh the fastest absorbing protein out of all the different types of protein so um, you know, I, I recommend that for that reason alone, but again, it's, it's your preference, what works Definitely. for you, what you enjoy, the taste. What doesn't hurt your tummy. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, we had a question earlier about uh, vegetarian proteins and uh, for vegan athletes and just even vegan or vegetarian gym goers. Um, one misconception usually is that the sweet thing about whey and casein and all those is that they're a complete protein, whereas most um, vegetarian or vegetable sources of protein is not a complete protein so you're not getting all of the amino acids that you need um, to function or for your body to function um, so you want to make sure that whatever protein powder you choose whether it's vega or whatever that it is a combination of two different protein sources that are vegetarian so like a hemp and a pea or whatever mm -hmm. basically so make sure you're getting a complete protein which i think um i'm sure there's quite a few brands out there like vega that you know that's that's standard that they mm -hmm. would have two different protein sources Definitely. right yeah, yeah. Not sponsored by Vega. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what else can we talk about? Um, Pre-workout stuff? I guess yeah. we kind of talked about like what we would eat before a workout. If you want to look at the science um, for that, they kind of say, I guess we were talking a little bit about this earlier. It all depends on what your goals are. If mm -hmm. you're looking to gain muscle, we're going to tell you different things than if you're looking to lose weight. We're going to tell you completely different things than if you're a pro athlete too. Mm -hmm. So it just is a range for um, a lot of the weight loss uh, patients or clients that I have come in, they're always like, what do I eat before a workout? Or what do I eat right after? And you're just like, well, if your goal's weight loss and you're meeting your calorie intake, you probably don't eat anything pre or post mm -hmm. unless it's um, unless you haven't eaten in a really long time and you're just like need it for a fuel source. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like the obviously the intensity of your workouts is a huge factor in all of this too. Um, if your goal is weight loss, you know, you, you don't have to be, well, first of all, you don't have to be eating a lot of carbs. Your body's gonna function just fine on a very low carb, um, higher protein and higher fat. Um, but yeah, it depends. It really does depend on so many things. Like we were saying, just the intensity of your workouts. If you're going to do a super intense workout and you know, then you are probably gonna need a little bit of a carbohydrate source um, if you're not in the ketogenic <laughs> state. <laughs> yeah. I was just reading this book on it's what low carb high performance or something it's called yeah and it was talking about how carbohydrates um you can store like 2,000 calories worth but for uh fat you have like 40,000 calories stored which it it's just mind-boggling like yeah you just have a fuel source on you at all times right yeah and so. i guess to kind of go through how you your body actually burns um when you are burning um calories or fats you're uh, your body will burn into your carbohydrate stores first, then it digs into your fat, and then it digs into your protein. Mm -hmm. um, so on the ketogenic diet, I, I guess if you don't have any of those carbohydrate sources, then you're just you're just digging into your fat. Mm -hmm. um, 
when you're working out, right? And yeah. that's and even in your just day to day, you're just going to be burning into your fat stores, yeah. which is why it's super beneficial for um, weight, weight loss. loss. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so I'm not doing it for weight loss. I'm just doing it to like try it and just see what it's all about. So I'm mild experimenter on myself, yeah. I guess, if I'm going to talk about it and suggest it to people. Usually I want to try it first and uh, troubleshoot any issues. So yeah, some of the main issues I see with um, keto is that people don't drink enough water with it. They don't uh, oh. replenish their electrolytes enough. So that causes a whole other world of system problems, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, those sensations of like hangry, I guess, come up pretty quick okay. too. Yeah. So and then another thing is it's shocking how many people are not eating the amount of calories that they should be eating. Um, and this happens keto or not. Yes. Like when I show yeah. people their caloric intake just to like sit there for the day and not do anything, they're like, no way. Yeah. Um, and then to see what foods actually mean in that sense is also mind blowing for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so we were talking earlier about like MyFitnessPal or those types of trackers where people can actually see you know, what they're putting into their body. And I think that's just like mind blowing for a lot of people. It is. And um, I, I don't want to, I'm not saying I support Weight Watchers, but I, I do think that it's a very good program for people just to put their mind, it, it's, they're just aware, they're just conscious of what they're eating. And that's why I feel like there's a lot of success with programs like that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you could do the same with my fitness pal or any kind of food tracker where you're just you're aware of what you're putting into your body how much of each thing and it, it opens people's eyes like it's big time big time yeah, yeah. Um, and that's one thing with clients that I've worked with the biggest success has come from um, like when they're food tracking is because they're just they're like oh wow like I you're just you're controlling and maybe you won't go and dig that extra handful of nuts or whatever it is like maybe you just you're like okay well I know I can only consume this much more in the day and mm. yeah yeah and it's pretty crazy like I think that you mentioned nuts it's one of the biggest ones actually because um what is it like eight almonds or something is a serving eight to ten almonds as a serving and yeah. I mean like I could eat a half a bag of trail mix real quick oh yeah. yeah oh yeah it's it's hard I've always had a hard time with that too like I would always say I would choose to have a nut butter over a handful of nuts it's just so much more satisfying and yeah, it's yeah. like similar but nuts are great for you and I'm not saying <laughs> yeah, yeah. like eat and, them just yeah. like <laughs> be mindful while you're eating them yeah for sure do we have any questions yet over there yeah actually we do have a question here from uh, Colby Margerison mm. uh, she just basically asked about the BCAAs and uh, when and uh, like when, when would you take it and uh, maybe just, just talk a little bit about BCAAs and any cholesterol on top of that yeah Okay, so the question was um, asking about BCAs and I guess timing of when you should have the BCAs. So um, like I've kind of said, I've always uh, taken BCAs when I would do a workout fasted. So in the mornings, if I were to go do cardio in the morning, when you think about it, you've been sleeping for however many hours. You probably had your last meal a couple hours before you went to bed. So really your body is very depleted when you wake up in the morning and to go do a workout, you don't wanna be digging into your protein stores for energy. So you wanna be replenishing that um, then with the BCA. So um, that's one very important time when you would wanna take them. And I always drink them when I'm working out. Um, again, it's just kinda, it's helping repair and rebuild the muscles as you're working out. Mm -hmm. um, that's my opinion and what I've kind of always gone with. and. But Nicole was saying an interesting study that she found out earlier. Yeah, so I mean, in that state, I think branched chain amino acids are perfect. Like if you're working out in a fasted state, you definitely need to replenish your stores of amino acids for muscle repair and muscle growth. Um, but if you're getting enough protein in your diet, research kind of shows that branched chain amino acids may not be like the be all end all um, because you're already at your max stores like there's there's a point of no return basically for branched chain amino acids and who knows like maybe the research will come out you know next year saying like oh my god they're vital and if you're not taking them you're done for but <laughs> um yeah but a lot of the research that's coming out right now shows that yeah if you're getting enough protein you actually don't need um those in your pre-workout but again there's also like the habit of it too if you mm -hmm. get like a delicious pre-workout of branched chain amino acids and that primes you to put your shoes on and that primes you to go to the gym, then like go yeah. for it. <laughs> and yeah. we were saying to um, a lot of people that I think both of us have worked with do not get enough protein in their mm -hmm. diet. Women Especially. more specifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so it's maybe it is a really good thing for um, 
clients that we work with that you know they they aren't getting enough protein so BCA would be a really good supplement um, to have in their diet. Definitely. Um, somebody asked about uh, creatine as well. Um, creatine is one of like the most researched ergogenic aids out there. Um, and it, like, I remember my mom growing up, like my brother would ask for creatine because he'd be working out <laughs> and playing hockey and stuff. She'd be like, no, you can't have that. Like, yeah. it's so bad for you. Um, but research shows time and time again that, you know, it's, it's not bad for you. And there's, as long as you're taking it within the dosage and you have no kidney issues, like it's pretty good for you actually. And there's some really great research for muscle growth from it. So if that's not one you're taking and you are looking to gain muscle, that's definitely an option. Some people say it makes them gain weight, but it's, it's actually just like a little bit of water retention. Right. Um, so it's not really something that you have to worry about. And then we had a question to you specific to the, like, the ketogenic diet mm -hmm. and creatine. And yeah, it's good to go. It's gonna work kind of the same mechanisms. It's, it doesn't have to be with carbohydrates for it to function, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, that's actually something that I have never taken, a supplement that, yeah. I guess um, I've always naturally had a good amount of muscle just from being a gymnast. Yeah. And I remember like when I was five years old, I had little biceps. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, so cute. So um, it's been like a natural, I guess, easy for me to build muscle. And mm -hmm. it's just, I guess, but if you are, because females as well, like it's not, again, it's not anything that's going to make you gain weight. It's going to help you build muscle. Um, and then the weight gain is the water retention, which exactly. I feel like a lot of, yeah, a lot of people have that misconception that they're gaining weight, but it might just be a little bit of water weight. So, mm -hmm. um, any other yeah. questions out there? Uh, just overall, like what, uh, like what is something you've always wanted to that you haven't tried as a supplement or anything really? About Style of diet. diet or anything like that mm -hmm. that you like want to explore uh, and maybe test at some point for yourselves. Yeah. Um, He'd asked uh, if there's any type of diet or any supplement that we haven't tried, either of us, that we would want to try. Um, it's funny, when me and Nicole first met, I remember saying how I wanted to, I wanted to try keto. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always, I'm comfortable with the diet that I've always followed. And um, I think it would be a good challenge for me and force me to step outside of my comfort zone. Um, even paleo, paleo or keto, like to do something like that, that's higher fat than I ever have really had mm -hmm. and uh, lower carb. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I went to naturopathic medical school, I was a dietitian and I remember like the slides coming up of all the different types of uh, diets that were out there. And I just, th it's hilarious how many there are. Yeah. And uh, there's such like a negative connotation word around the word diet. Yeah. And like we all have our own diet. It's just basically what you eat in a day. Yeah. So I don't know if I, I pretty well tried most of the ones that I was interested in or thought like, hey, what's going on here? Um, but I don't know. There's this one song that makes me want to go <laughs> vegan every time I hear it. And oh it's like, God. it brings tears to my eyes, basically. What, a song? Yeah, it's a propaganda song. And I forget the <laughs> name of it, but... Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, every time I listen to it, it's like talking about like the chicks on the conveyor belt and oh my god, oh, it just like rips my heart out. Basically, not to get I, too down. No, here. but I like can't watch documentaries. Yeah. Honestly, I as much as there's probably really good information, and I'm not being like ignorant. I feel like by avoiding them, but um, you know, I I don't know if I support the cruelty behind it, but I it's just a part of human nature, really. Like we've been eating animals for forever yeah, yeah but i don't want to touch too deep <laughs> <laughs> i know not to get too down yeah. that rabbit hole but opening a can of worms there for sure and i don't know like if that's your style then go for it and if, i always think it in the back of my head like if i couldn't i don't know like do the actual killing and stuff myself then like do i deserve to eat it but yeah. it's also like 2018 and yeah. like i have to go to work every day and stuff, <laughs> so it's it's a bit of a toss-up for sure yeah uh, another one that came through yeah uh, what meals would be best when breaking your intermittent fasting? And maybe you can chat a little bit about intermittent fasting yeah. because it seems to be very popular. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then does that basically, the meals that you have when breaking your intermittent fasting, does it change depending on the type of fasting you're doing? Maybe? Mm -hmm. So intermittent fasting um, <laughs> is what it is, mm -hmm. what it says in the name basically. But the main uh, one I hear most about is like a 16 to eight ratio. So 16 hours of the day, um, you're not eating and then you have an eight hour um, eating window. Mm -hmm. People ask, does that count when you're sleeping? 
that's funny. Like that's the main question I get. I'm like, yes, while you're sleeping too. Like that's you don't hilarious. have to. <laughs> yeah. There's not that many hours. Yeah, in the yeah. Day. I was gonna say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I always get that question, that's which funny. is funny to me. But um, yeah, so that's the main ratio. You can do day long fasts. You can do three day fasts. Um, not for me. <laughs> not happening. Hey? <laughs> no. Yeah, I tried a 24 hour, and I definitely felt like I was on another planet after. Oh like, my god. Yeah, my mind was on a different Did, level. Were you sure. working? Like, were you on the couch all day, or were you actually? No, nope, like, I was working, um, wow. and I actually had a presentation that night on intermittent fasting, and it was almost like I had drinking 12 Red Bulls or something. Wow. Not that I drink Red Bull, but yeah, like it that's felt. That's what it felt like. Yeah, you wow. were going a mile a minute. Um, so most of the time, I practice a 16 to 8 ratio. Um, within the eight hours, as soon as my feeding window, <laughs> it sounds like some sort of <laughs> animal, as soon as my feeding window starts, um, usually I try to get a uh, really well-balanced meal, so like fats, protein. Um, right now I'm doing keto, so I don't eat a lot of carbs, but the carbs that I do eat, um, you know, I make sure to get them on the plate as well. Fat and protein is going to keep you fuller for longer, um, so I make sure that, it, and make sure you're having like good sources of things, so like avocados, uh, coconut oil, um, all that sort of stuff is what mm -hmm. I fill my plate with. And then like good sources of meat. Ideally, if you could go to your local butcher that gets it on <laughs> the farm, then yeah. that would be amazing. Yeah. But uh, I know everyone's busy out there and we have to be realistic with, um, you know, what we're asking people to do for sure. Yeah, I actually tried uh, intermittent fasting for a period of time before our wedding uh, last summer. And honestly, I, I really enjoyed it. I mm -hmm. felt really good. Um, my energy levels were great. Like mm -hmm. I, I was surprised because I was going to bed late and waking up early. So mm -hmm. I felt like my I was awake for a lot of the time when I was fasting, which which was hard. It's more of like a mental game, but it mm -hmm. was kind of a nice like challenge. I was like, oh, like it was forcing. It was a good goal that yeah, I had yeah. every day to try and reach that like time period that I had set. So yeah. Um, and yeah, I was kind of eating what I would normally eat. Mm -hmm. um, but it is it is crazy to try and squeeze in your calories that you would normally eat over X amount of time. Yeah. Now you're trying to squeeze into this amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a struggle. And a lot of people um, that I were talking to about it, they were saying, you know, they found they were trying to eat less in their yeah. eight periods, which or eight hour period, which isn't necessarily a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. You still want to be making sure that you're eating enough calories in yeah. that eight hour period. Yeah, that's one of the biggest things I hear too, um, is that they couldn't get all of their calories in. So that's where um, meal prep comes in so handy and yeah. it's so important um, because if you're getting your calories down too low, it's the same as eating too many calories, right? You're right. still gonna, you're gonna gain weight, your body's gonna go into like a stress mode and hold on to food because it doesn't know when its next meal is coming from basically. Right. Um, what else about intermittent fasting? Yeah, it's it's awesome. I yeah. love it. <laughs> the brain health benefits are amazing. The longevity research on it is coming out. Um, the projections look pretty good for you know any sort of mental degenerative disease, um, Alzheimer's, all that sort of stuff. So That's and it's awesome. sweet for patients because you're taking something away, or sorry, you're, yeah, you're eliminating something from their life instead of adding something to it. So so many times a lot of people come in where you're. Um, you're like, oh, you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this. But I've really tried to limit that in most of my practice. And now taking things away or just adding one thing to their diet seems to be more effective than being like, you got to do all then this. Then adding, yeah, you yeah. need to be eating this, eating that, doing this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. changing one habit at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, guys, I think that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for your questions. Um, it was awesome having Dr. Cox on today. And uh, if you guys have any ideas of future talks that you'd like, um, anything that you'd like us to talk about, uh, we would love to hear it. So again, give us some feedback. And uh, yeah, otherwise we will see you next week. We'll be back in the gym uh, mm -hmm. doing some kind of workout. So yeah, we'll see you then. So thanks for coming. And yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Okay, see ya. <laughs>